My name's Jeff. Welcome to Versus Live. Why write poetry? poetry? The poem is done. Like, what was the point here? I, I also don't know where this poem is going. Poetry is very love-hate. The worst possible thing is them just saying no. Hello, everyone. Good morning, evening, and afternoon. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Versus Live with Jeff and Matthias. Oh, my gosh. That Nothing happened. That was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> We're professional. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> but, Matthias, I know you had something yeah. that you have been paying Jeff and Matthias. Close attention to. I'm looking at your screen as yeah. The light. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So okay. One of the things that I've been keeping up with, which you know, I actually think when it comes to the sports world, this has been like an, an incredibly, you know, incredibly positive uh, kind of development, um, especially when it comes to uh, like just really sports in general. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely when it comes to uh, women's sports, I know that uh, this na- this past national championship, NCAA championship for um, women's basketball um, is one of the, the highest viewed women. Maybe it is the highest viewed women's basketball uh, tournament and national championship game ever. Oh, wow. um, so <laughs> clap it up for them. If I'm wrong about that, then <laughs> then <laughs> just uh, like forget, forget I ever said this. <laughs> I never said this, but I think it's it was really, really highly watched, and um, people people really enjoyed it. I I think a um, bit of a controversy kind of came out of it, though. So I mean, it kind of has a couple of different um, legs to it. Um, and the national. So one of the things that um, should be understood. So Caitlin Clark, she is um, one of the she is. She, I, I think she actually did get the MVP of the of the the college league. Um, should have, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, freaking phenomenal player, right? So, they, like, no, to be clear, none of this is against any either of the players, and definitely not against her. Um, and when we're talking about like this in specific, when it just comes to, um, you know, throughout the season, she's been really boisterous. As I, I, the thing is, it's like it's sports, and so like if you if you're a person that watches sports, that intake sports pretty often as I do. I don't I mean, you you watch sports pretty uh, Keep it on good. Philly teams, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Why okay. did you know hey, they, we're, this? We're, we were leading the Celtics this, last time I checked. Season. The Phillies are on four, and oh. <laughs> the Eagles are keeping people. So it could be it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> you you almost got so yeah so uh, so uh, Iowa um, Caitlin Clark plays for Iowa and they. Um, they 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 made it to the national championships, but they lost to LSU naturally. Um, and Angel Reese is a player um, for for LSU, incredible, phenomenal um, ball player. Um, and you know, one of the things when it comes to you know taunting, when it comes to you know just like celebrations and people getting excited and things like that, um, you. you and the thing is, the the thing that's odd is that you don't really experience it in men's sports as far as the the people being like upset with it you know what i mean people Mm. people kind of take start taking part in it i remember Mm. um last season uh when the uh the golden state warriors when they won the championship during that you know playoff run you know steph curry was doing the night you know good night the the uh you know putting them to bed um they were he was doing that pretty much their entire uh, playoff run, you know, when they would, you know, have a good lead and or you put the nail in the coffin with this uh, with a gr- really great shot. Um, and the thing is, you start seeing it being mimicked in other places as yeah. well. I mean, I don't, even know, I don't yeah. even know necessarily that Steph Curry started it, so I mean, like, that was yeah. the first time I saw it. Yeah. So, um, so you start seeing that, and you start seeing other players. I mean, I would see soccer players doing it. You would see, so you know what I'm saying. So it was like it was it it, it had legs, um, and I think that so during the the national championship, or kind of close to the end of the national championship game, when it was really clear that Iowa um, was 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 gonna was gonna lose this one, um, you know, Angel Reese was doing you know some of the taunts, doing the ring thing, the you know put the ring on yeah. me thing, and the thing that kind of came out of it, which again it was a little bit it it was it took me back a little bit because I was just like, wait, what is going on, like. Yeah, like of course that's okay. Like when it's like you don't even think about it. It's like yeah, like these are competitors, and both of these players know like you know whichever way it goes, you gotta <laughs> if you're losing and they're doing that to you, you gotta you gotta take that same way if you're if you're winning. Like or at the very least, you gotta be like I'm willing to dish it out and I'm willing to take it if it comes to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of contention. But the way that the thing that I was thinking about when it comes to 
you know, the, the things that we talk about, which is poems, poetry, poetry world, right? Um, you know, I think slam is a space that is, I think it's incredibly competitive, but it's like, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> almost you know what i mean the, well i guess there's a lot of depending on where you are depending on who you are it's like you're not allowed to say that because the thing that you're doing with slam is not this objective metric you know what i mean it's not like the thing that you're doing with with poetry slam is you're not shooting a ball and whether it makes or misses is is clearly definable by everybody in the room you know what i mean like if if you take a shot from the three point line and you make the shot. Nobody has an argument about, you know, they're not going to be like, eh, I give that a two because it just didn't have a great form. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it just got me to thinking, you know, when it comes to slam, when it comes to these things that are like uh, subjective, right? So it's like, mm-hmm. you can't even necessarily mm-hmm. walk off stage taunting. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. what, now, now you, you, you have to figure out, what's happening with the judges Mm -hmm. and then that can even play into it you know what i mean like what what are your thoughts on kind of the having a real competitive vigor um in in the poetry space and poetry slam space especially i mean there's a lot at stake with the performances i mean obviously not as much as like you know winning a championship and things like that but at the same time i mean it's more money on the line for the players. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> but, even in, but I mean, but, but yeah, I mean, but also like, I mean, in poetry, I mean, you winning slams, there's yeah money involved directly and indirectly, yeah. right? I mean, typically your people that are winning your higher tier competitions are also people that if they don't have, for instance, like book deals now or at the time of their winning, yeah, with you, you kind of expect it within the next three, five years, they're going to have something coming out yeah and you, even if they don't fine you can make the argument okay well that's not even a guarantee fine but that also still gives you things like clout that's something you're putting yeah. on your resume that's you're giving yourself credentials and things like that so there's a lot at stake so in terms of your if you're viewing your writing as a as a career so i think any sort of time where you're having that level of impact on your life competition is going to be a natural result yeah but i mean so what do you think when it comes to you know if you if you were to see somebody you know after the slam you know if they they just because you know here's the here's the odd thing kind of the the thing that makes it odd for me because i i I get the you know the impact that it, it probably has on your career as a writer as a performer um as somebody that's just trying to get your name out there period you know what i'm saying there's a lot of things that don't even have don't have really anything to do with the poems in specific that you being successful right. in slam can kind of have kind of tentacles out too mm-hmm. but uh, man it's always it's so odd because it's like you're being kind of competitive in in things because like you you having that kind of level of competition when it comes to like a, a lot of times incredibly personal cutting like stories and Mm -hmm. things that are uh and like these really really personal and kind of trigger warning worthy uh concepts and dynamics that you're presenting on stage and it's like you're doing that with a competitive mindset you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's like now you you have this person who's like maybe they're writing things and maybe in order for them to write the things that they would need to write in order to win a slam, they need to change the the filter by which they see the thing. So, like, maybe, right. you know, somebody is walking in through a doorway and they just didn't see you there and they let the door, you know, shut and you had to open up the door yourself. Well, now that story becomes how you know racism and how like they're like these mm-hmm. this e- this evil like kind of monster conglomerate whereas it's, it's like maybe if you didn't have the uh incentive to make this a incredibly cutting personal you know uh narrative that mm-hmm. fleshed out how evil racism is maybe you don't even get to this thing being racism maybe you mm-hmm. get ah they didn't see me you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're viewing this as a, a, a negative thing. 
I I think that if you if everybody were to openly admit, I so I think I think one of two things. I think a it's either a net negative that there this is a competitive paradigm that you know you have people that are going at you know only one person can win overall you might have tips sometimes you have like three winners but only one person got bit so it's like you you have these people that are competing and the things that they're competing with are the tools that they're using to compete In some ways are performances but they're performing things that are a lot of times deeply personal mm-hmm. narratives and you know they're they're using and sometimes it harms a person that's mm-hmm. you know the speaker so you don't like well. that act of like weaponizing I, I I want I want to either you have to do one all the way or the other all the way. So either a it can be competitive and everybody recognizes the like get rid of the whole it's the poems not the like that's because that's not I, I think that's like mm-hmm. a that's something that you're telling yourself so that you mm-hmm. don't so that you can all feel like we're all just here for poems. Mm. But it's like you know some there. I think that the people that typically are the better performers are like there because of the fact that like, Oh, I know what I got to do in order to win this. Mm -hmm. Like I've been on like, you know, national teams and like regional teams. And it's like, that's like part of the strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, we're, we're, we're sitting there strategizing. Okay. If somebody brings this kind of poem up, what kind of poem do we bring to the table? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. you you know, then I'm like, I, I'm fine with that being the thing that we do. If everybody's agreeing that the thing that we're doing in this space is we're competing and we're trying our heart, like, and everybody is mm-hmm. strategizing and things like that, but make that surface, make that out in the open. Mm-hmm. Don't make that the thing that you all are kind of trying to keep away mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the dynamic. And you're trying to make the actual dynamic. Oh, these are just poems that we really enjoy and we're really out. I'm like, no, like you're trying to, you're trying to make the audience or make these three to five judges or whatever feel something in specific and then really make the audience too so the audience can infl- can can uh influence the judges mm-hmm. you know as well so it's like either do that all the way just really kind of make it mm-hmm. very very clear that we are battling like this mm-hmm. is like a real battle mm-hmm. for you know word supremacy or whatever but because mm-hmm. i think that i think if you take the <laughs> If you take the if you take the lie that you tell yourself out of it, if you take that away from it, and you just make it about that, then I think people might feel a little different about bringing, like, about telling a narrative or or about the way that they can the way that they confront or kind of do the narrative. Because mm-hmm. th- again, I just think there's a lot of poems that exist that are as severe as they are because they have to win a slam. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if like if you just if you just made it straight up like this is like we're competing with the skill and storytelling and all this if we make that the overall it's like i think you get a lot less people trying to do like the severity thing and you just you get more technique you get more oh like this is maybe a a mystery like you know maybe there's a maybe there's a device that i'm using in this poem that it's does something else when you're listening to it than when mm-hmm. it's on page. You know what I mean? Like now you kind of have you have a little bit more range because you're actually just making the technique and the skill and the performance, you know, a part of the thing that you're putting out there as opposed to just being like, ah, oh, I'm just getting up there and doing poems from my heart and whatever. I'm like, guys, we we know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Or you can take the competitive edge out of it and just make it like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, nobody really wins this thing. Like we all are performing we're and maybe the the scores are so that you can do what maybe you would admit in that space is i want to see what this person what else this person has and if i want to see what else this person has and i want to make that sure mm-hmm. that person gets to the end mm-hmm. but then when you get to the end it's like if there's a thing that you win after this then it's like oh you've made it <laughs> you made it not necessarily about the words which is fine mm-hmm. but then just admit that you know mm-hmm. What I mean? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you don't like the dishonest it, it, it kind of quote unquote <laughs> of the current format. yeah no i mean yeah it feels like a it feels like kind of a requirement for something like poems mm-hmm. right yeah because it's like you can't really do that with basketball if it, it like everybody admits because it's, there's you're not dealing with people's like in the interior dimensions of people's thoughts and feelings like you're not dealing with that you know what i mean mm-hmm. like maybe to a, on a level when like i I know personally, if I was 
playing defense on Steph Curry and he shot a three pointer and he's already running away before I get a chance to turn around and look at the basket and it goes in and he's already ready to play defense on the other end of the court. That would mess me up. <laughs> I would be like, then there's what's the point? What's the point of life? Exactly. Like what exactly am I doing? Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe you're doing it to a certain degree, but it's like it's there. There's objective metrics behind this game, mm-hmm. where I think that poems mm. they're they're a not objective metric. Mm-hmm. You know, mean you can have a completely different view on whose poem was good or bad, and we're both right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's hard because I think even in systems with academia and stuff like that, like it's not the same as slam, but it's like people getting positions and things like that. There's there's kind of this ability of can you play the the long term game, you know, can you network, can you mm. like and things like that. You know, it's not as fast as the hey, I want to slam competition, but there's still that aspect of for a lot of your bigger prizes, there's still kind of a game mentality to a degree. Mm. I don't I mean the, all the things you mentioned are the things I'm not I'm not someone who's particularly interested in slam. Um Yeah. You know, for, for a lot of the things that you've brought up. But then, but I also I, I appreciate the the aim of competition and because it, it adds a fun aspect to it. It adds a sense. It can also kind of push you in your own work, you know. And I appreciate that aspect of it. I guess my question is: Is it possible to have something like a sort of competition in writing that is still able to? adhere to that notion that it's not about actually winning it's just about appreciation of the form uh i mean yeah it's it's probably that without the prizes because uh, because i mean i mean and maybe it's that with i mean you know maybe you can't maybe there's it's impossible to avoid it because you're still going to get recognition. I mean, yeah, the thing is, people are there's still going to be an audience. Like, unless it's like something that's made clay completely anonymous. Like that, that's probably something that would have to. You'd have to take the name off of the work and just appreciate the work. But then, I mean, it wouldn't be the performance. There wouldn't, you know, what I mean, it wouldn't be like a performance. I was thinking more just on the page or something like that. But yeah, or mm-hmm. like, for, or you could like, for instance, like pull a poem out of a hat and read whatever poem you get. And I mean, in that sense, it's kind of anonymous. That wouldn't really be like a slam. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't but, that, but that's, that's kind of the I goal. Mean, <laughs> but that's the goal, yeah. right? Um, I mean, that's something if you guys have ideas, like alternatives to slam. I've had ideas like for different types of competition. I think changing the sorts of prizes that you go after, um, changing the way you handle judging um, yeah. could be other alternatives too. Dude, a couple of years ago, actually, when Rust Belt was in Ohio, um, and... I mean, I guess it was more than a couple of years yeah, ago. I was about to say, but, yeah. I think it was the night I broke your glasses. So. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? So I went to the restaurant that right after, and I was just blending the frame, and it just like snapped. Out. Oh like, man, I forgot about that. That was funny. I, I, really, I literally just like opened it, was like, <laughs> it's like, man, that was such a long time ago. Yeah, that's funny. But yeah, so like we poetry uh, happened too, by the way. But, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's what I after took my lunch money after that. <laughs> but no, um, but yeah, so I I was I was judging a slam, and like the. I, I don't think I'm exactly like you when it comes to slam, but I think when I when I'm judging a slam, it's like it's almost like a, a slam dunk competition. It's like I can't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this thing where I'm like the the only barometer that I have is between eight and ten because that's what most people are playing with. Most people are like every poem is going to be between eight and 10. Now where it lands, it might be you get one decimal place, but it's going to be between eight and ten. I'm like I got. I got from zero to ten. You know what I mean? Or I, got, I guess from one to ten. If I get, I think if I give somebody a zero, then mm-hmm. you know that's a. I mean, really, if you give somebody a one, that's probably a riot too. But yeah, but you got from one to ten. So to me, you know, I I I, I can't. I, I I will not name names, but the person whose poem that I saw, like, I don't think it was a bad poem, but I think that like in the same way that you know. In the first round of a slam dunk competition, I'm not going to give out a 10 because I'm like, I know nobody's doing their 10s right now. You know what I mean? And it's like, there has to be some where to go. Um, and I didn't even think it was, I didn't think it was like a fantastic, spectacular poem either. It was like, okay, whatever. And I get the poem a six. And the thing is, is like, to me, it's like, if 
people set waited to find out is like they would understand like a six for me is like the, the, I'm gonna be consistent. Like that's what you want. Like you don't, no. you don't. Even if all of your judges were exactly like that, then I think you, you're gonna, you're gonna still have the real score. You're gonna still have the real placements for everybody. Yeah. Um, if everybody's at the very least consistent in their judging. But yeah, I gave the poem like a a six, and I remember like very vividly like there was like one poet, and he was just like, you know, uh, you know, she's telling this, you know, this. This, and she was like reading it off the paper, which I didn't judge her. I didn't judge against her as much as it was just like just the performance. Aspect the performance it. aspect. It was just like I, I think it was like she was kind of like breaking down a little bit throughout the poem, and it wasn't. It, it was like cl- clearly, maybe it was. A, for all I know, that's part of the performance. You know what I'm saying? For all I know, it's like she's like I got to cry through this poem so they could really, you know, it's like you know what I'm saying. It's like so to me, I'm like that's not gonna like you know. It, you can't incorporate to me you cannot incorporate crying into the poems like unless it's like a part of the poem and even with that it feels like that's like a prop right yeah. but yeah, you know what i mean what so it's like to me when i'm listening to it i'm like yeah you can't do, like if if, if you're if you kind of lose your composure throughout the poem like and listen i i feel for you as an as a human you know what i'm saying i feel for you as a human but as somebody who's like you know if I'm giving a score to the art, I'm like, oh, like I think it's no. that might that might mess it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And people were like, again, this poem is specific. He was just he was just like really upset with me. He was just like, yeah. If you were to listen to the poem, you understand how what she came through and all this other stuff. And I was like, guys, like this is isn't this part of it? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, but like, I, and I get it. Then I'm like, okay, if I would have heard the entire poem, what? I, part of this thing is the performance aspect mm-hmm. of it. And mm-hmm. so I think that it's like, it's like in that situation, in that space, it's like you're judging somebody, but the thing that you're being told to take into account is the, the emotional dynamic that this person's going through and telling the story. And I'm like, well, hold on now, wait a minute. Now, I- am I supposed to be caring for this person as a human being and being like, Oh my gosh, I'm like, because are you if okay? So, if so, <laughs> then like, why then you can't, then you can't be judged on it. I can't judge. I can't be judging you. You know what I mean? I can't be in this space where I'm like, I'm yeah. trying to figure out what you're, how you're doing emotionally because then it's like, that's supposed to affect my score. That's supposed to, that's yeah. supposed to be the reason that somebody else, I think, performed a really – somebody performed a funny poem that had zero stakes, but it was hilarious, well-written poem, but it had zero stakes. But I'm like, well, they didn't reach into their trauma and pull me its bones and show them to me on stage. <laughs> like, they didn't do that. They just told a funny poem, and it was a well-written poem. I'm supposed to just – I'm like, that's – that's less. I can't. I can't give that a high mm-hmm. a higher score. Be- I can't give that as higher score or higher because look, I this person didn't do the trauma thing with me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just just kind of what the the point what you're saying um, is that I think in all we I I actually really I really prefer the poets. There's like a couple poets that are very very open and direct about it. Um, T'Challa, uh, he's a he's a poet. Um, no, it's not. It's not well, his name is not T'Challa. Man, why I am mean, I space on his name? I mean, I'm, you know, do your thing. Uh, I don't know. I, he'll come to me. He's like, he's he's an incredible um a poet. But um, Ephraim, me, me, me and him talk. He's like, yeah, like, like I'm I'm out here trying. Like, and I'm talking about. I'm talking my stuff while I'm performing. Like, like while I'm before the show after the show so out there like i'm like having these open conversations where i'm like yeah man that's like a that's how that's that's how i envision slam on a competitive level because i'm thinking to myself like yeah like i i don't want you to listen to my poem and then ha- and part of the thing that you're doing and judging my poem is man this person was open this whole life to me mm-hmm. i'm gonna give mm-hmm. him a higher score mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, I think anytime you're judging, I mean, the first, I've been in similar situations as a judge yeah. where the first the first round is always the hardest when you're giving out those scores because people, <laughs> you're basically, you're breaking the paradigm because people have expectations of judges that you're not going to go below a certain point. And uh-huh. so when you start, <laughs> if your first score is like a three or something like that, people are like, oh, like what? <laughs> and things yeah. like that. And then they kind of expect you to bend back to, 
after that first poem. But like it, once you start getting that consistency, I find that the, the heckling kind of stops and people actually start. They understand, they, they, the understand they understand the system that you're using, you know. Or they chase you out of town with pitchforks yeah. and torches. Yeah. I, either one. One time, but. <laughs> um, either one. But that's just because I had created that monster under a storm and then he started terrorizing the village. But, you know. I am not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> they got over <laughs> Um, But, yeah, I mean, I think it slams a tricky space to navigate in that sense. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's why it turns off a lot of people to slam mm-hmm. but at the at the same time it's in, in terms of poetry and like competitions with poetry it's, it's the biggest thing that there is right now yeah i mean i i, I the thing is like the competitive nature of it there's always going to be an allure to the competitive nature of anything so like um the all-star game the the national the, the the NBA finals is going to get higher ratings than the NBA All Star game because the NBA finals you know is actual real competition like the NBA All Star game is like these guys are just yeah. you know having fun you know what I'm saying and then the NBA but the NBA All Star game even though it, the comp- the competition is a lot lighter it's still uh, it, it's like it's better than just watching people just bounce the basketball around and just well, like kind of do nothing. You know, it's interesting you mentioned like, cause the all-star game is like, that's your chance to kind of, it has more of that kind of fun, you know, there's all kinds of events around it. It's kind of just this, just like a celebration of like, look at how great these athletes are, you know, yeah. when there's no defense, um, none at all. And right now poetry doesn't really have that. Cause poetry really just has slam. And on the other side, there's, just your kind of traditional like open mics and readings but there's really nothing in the middle um and i and i think that that could be something i mean i have ideas for events and things like that that i think could kind of shake things up but i think i think that's kind of the thing that's missing for for poetry if you're looking for something else that's still poetry involved but isn't quite the same thing as just like your traditional reading um but still kind of has that sense of a little bit of competition but it's like more fun um that's <laughs> which is fun <laughs> suppose whatever you guys are doing <laughs> um the, that's why i think his poetry is kind of missing right now yeah that's real well yeah. coming soon maybe i don't know probably maybe. yeah just, <laughs> it's just all about keep, time and stay tuned people in, go. maybe just do that um following up <laughs> but speaking of fun speaking of fun i have a game for us to play um if you can join me on the google doc Messias, and go down to oh there's more down here don't go there. don't go too far down oh. no, no, no no you'll see all my secrets now so let's take a look at my document it's the floor plan of his house <laughs> <laughs> he says like the floor where like he keeps all his weapons like john wick <laughs> <laughs> my butter knife <laughs> you will never take it I'll take off my cold Why dead hands you use a sledgehammer to Get a butter knife out of some <laughs> that shit. <laughs> never get my butter. Uh, so we have here. Um, what did you? What did you? Look at that. Who would have thought? We, so, but this, however, I've done things to this poem. Ha ha. This is not how this poem was originally written. Uh-huh. So, but where's the original poem? Don't look. No, oh. stop looking. <laughs> There's one rule. <laughs> I will show you the original poem, but first we have to. Right now okay. it's intense. And we have to make it less into nonsense. So imagine that we have to restructure all of these lines into a new poem. Right. Wait, so should we, should we read the poem first? I mean, it's not going to. It's just random yeah. lines right now, but yeah, sure. We gotta read the random That's line. all we shall know for truth. I look at you and I sigh. Before we grow old and die, wine comes in at the mouth and love comes in at the eye. 
I lift the glass to my mouth. That's actually kind of an intriguing. That's <laughs> like, like, I don't know about right you, now. Jeff. I'm kind of feeling that. I'm this, not gonna lie. This feels like a kind of a well put together poem. I'm I'm a little bit remiss to do anything. To that. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is not the original poem. <laughs> I'm actually kind of liking this She's current like, form. Like I'm not gonna lie. He wrote Mo- Moby Dick. <laughs> it's just like I, now that I think about it's like, it, this guy, this guy had some real emotional conflict. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of interesting things going on in this current form. I'm not, not gonna. Um, <laughs> Sorry for <laughs> the premise, which is let's make this poem better by just jumbling it up. Oh, I, I just like switch line. I wasn't even reading it as I was doing that. Um, <laughs> this is like super interesting. Like the wine comes in at the mouth and love comes in at the eye. That's. <laughs> That's that's actually a, <laughs> that's actually some, a great poem. that's some bars right there. That's actually really good. Uh, <laughs> that's really dope. Um, okay, but um, I messed up this poem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually this, the the name of this stream is actually making classic poems better by moving the line. It's literally the, the name of the stream. So um, unfortunately, mission accomplished. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but um. Oh man! I mean, we can move to the second one. <laughs> keep this yeah. one as is. <laughs> this actually got yeah. really intriguing. I was just like, "What's I was like, "Are you sure this is not the original?" Wait, is it, wait. So where's where's no, the? No, 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 no. Is... Okay. All right. So we can we can look at the original for this one. Don't look at the doc. I will pull up the. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing this for a moment. <laughs> I really like the, the the rhythm for that too. Because it's like so it's like true side die mat. Like there's a lot of. I'm that's super interesting. I'm very intrigued. <laughs> this is this like is the, the, the original one is actually has some of the same comment, but it's much more traditional. Um, Everybody, the way that this segment was supposed to go is we're supposed to have this deconstructed version of this poem that Jeff has been able to pull apart, and then we're going going to restart it i would assume right yeah and then try to put it together in a way that made some like sense and flowed well and jeff accidentally took it apart and made it (laughs) (laughs) i think it's much more interesting yeah i do i do like this yeah so is is that the so this is our should i not look at it or no you can look at it now let's see all right here i'm gonna read the let's read the original so our remix well that's the remix and this is the original right yeah Mm -hmm. okay so uh wine comes in at the mouth and love's come in, and love comes in at the eye that's all we shall know for truth before we grow old and die i lift the glass to my mouth i look at you and i sigh wow the thing that you did was so much better <laughs> i like our version I a actually, lot better i'm actually very <laughs> like our... uh, very unfortunately the thing that you did with this poem i think really really did what i like our version so much better <laughs> <laughs> I like our two seconds of just cutting and moving lines around. So much. This is like how like the Bible was written. Um, they were just like, yeah, actually, we should just put this this part, this Hebrew part, mm-hmm. at the front. What, Daniel? Are you sure we can do mm-hmm. that? We can do yeah. anything. <laughs> I think you know some of the reasons that I say I like this the switch more. Yeah, is that last line the original? So as a last line, that's really. It I makes get it, sigh. but it loses. Yeah. It, you lose a lot of energy. You lose the momentum of the. Which you, you, you don't really. I, I don't think the poem keeps momentum as well. Yeah. In in the second mm-hmm. version. Yeah, and this, you know, and and that might entirely be the the intention. You know, you want to convey that sort of, sort of like resignation uh, in things, and that almost depression, that that weight, and I think that comes across with the last line, but it also you lose so much. Because, uh, but also says so, like matter of factly, Mm -hmm. yeah, that it being the last line Mm -hmm. of the poem is like it's. I think I I think I get that a lot more in the first, Mm. and and not the first, the second Mm -hmm. version, which is the the Mm -hmm. deconstructed and kind of re put together version. Mm -hmm. But I get that a lot more, and it feels more kinetic Mm -hmm. in its placement because it all it also happens a lot earlier in the poem. That's what you mentioned because. The first poem is also a lot more jumpy in terms of time. It's a lot. It feels a lot le- more. It's a lot less predictable, and it's a lot more yeah. unbalanced intentionally. <laughs> but <laughs> um, 
Because that because like the the second one is just it's very predictable. Yeah, you know. Um, whereas in the first one, it's like we we start off with the moment with the staging. Like, I look at you and I sigh, and then I'm forced backwards in time before we grow old and die. And then that that action wine comes in at the mouth, and then, but then it ends with the lifting of the glass. So like we've already there's this sort of like repetition of the action that like keep happening. So it's like I I feel so much less grounded, but in a positive way because it's like I, I I'm still in the same scene. Like the scene's still set. I'm still in that moment, but I'm also ungrounded in the scene because it's like I'm in the present and I'm in kind of like thinking future and I'm thinking past again and then I'm. And I, I, I like those shifts a lot. Um, yeah, I think the the action and I think it's analogous are kind of broken up by the because this wine comes in at the mouth and then you have a line and then you say I, and then I lift the glass to my mouth. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's kind of broken up by the, the analogy or maybe mm-hmm. it's the like it's the literal action is broken up by the the the, the picture, which mm-hmm. is and love comes in at the eye, which is. I think holds a completely different context when you put it right next yeah, to, the, especially at the ending. Like, it, yeah, it just, so much more weight to it, you know, because like just before, like it's one of those times. Like, you ever like listen to a song and like they have a killer line in the song? You're like, that that was a really good line, but then like it's the refrain. It's like, oh, it's like you don't want like your best line to be your refrain. You, I feel like, oh, you want it dude, to be okay. like, I don't know, you want to stand out and like be separate. One give thing. it some space to breathe. This might be some this okay. So, uh, Kanye, there's like the 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 documentary, the genius documentary. He actually the one of the deleted scenes, um, and it was just so it was an interesting thing to to really think about it because when he was like whenever he samples songs and he's he's trying to figure out what to sample, he doesn't sample the refrain. He samples the bridge mm. because it's like the bridge is the thing that like you will go back to you will go back in the lab and you'll try to put because that's going to be your most concise that's your power ballot part that's like that's where you're really trying to really win over Mm -hmm. you know the listener right Mm -hmm. um or and if you have if you haven't already or it's just when you're trying to really sink the knife in deeper like where whatever the pain whatever the situation is and he's like that's the part that i sample because that's the part that you know that's already the strongest part of your Right. That's the bridge. It's already your strongest part of the song. So it's like, yeah, just when you said that, I was just like, it's interesting because I'm like, yeah, like, I think the sh- the thing that you might, the, the, the way that I might process it is if there is a part of my poems that I'm like, this is predictably, for me, the strongest part of my poem, and I would initially write the poem however I would write poems, and then I would re-examine whatever that part is and be like okay how do i make my entire mm-hmm. poem as strong as mm-hmm. what i accidentally every time make mm-hmm. the strongest part of my yeah. poem you know and one of the ways to do that is actually make that your first line of your poem and then write a new poem off of that first <laughs> 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 um one of the things i like about the adjustment here is the last line has so much more agency and it also doesn't have that sort of like that kind of like emotional language, like with the sighing and things like that. Like, yeah. no, this is a lot like there's so many ways you can take that. Like I lift the glass to my mouth like this, you know, this, it's just pure action. Yeah. There's you know? a, there's a tangibility to it. That's mm-hmm. not there when you say I look at you. So now your art, mm-hmm. it's uh, somewhat ambiguous because it's like, it. There, there's not a, physical tether to looking at something you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so it's like i look at you and then i sigh which is also now the thing that you're really doing is you're like Mm -hmm. what is the emotional state of me looking at you like that last line like i look at you and i sigh it's very diluted so now i'm I'm finishing with two actions i look at you and i sigh that and is just you're diluting everything whereas like i lift the glass in my mouth you it's a single image um and also it just pairs so well with the wine comes in at the mouth and love comes in at the eye. So what do I choose? I choose the mouth. I lift the glass to my mouth. You know what I mean? Like I think. Yeah. There's um, like a choice. Now you're, exactly, yeah. now, now the reader is, is actually an active mm-hmm. uh, protagonist. Yeah. So, so Especially because, because earlier there's still the tension because that second line, I look at you and I sigh. So we know from the second 
line, the tension's there, but it becomes put in the background of the poem. Hmm. Whereas the tension is more at the forefront in the second version. So I, I don't know. For me, the first version has that extra layer of complexity to it. Um, when you say the first version, you mean the version that you... The, yes, <laughs> the new version. Okay, the, updated, the new version. The 2023 version, because this original film was written like the early 1900s or something. <laughs> Suck yeah. it, 1900s. Yeah. <laughs> I like All this. Right. I would, can you, if you reorder lines of poems, can you like publish them as yours? Like, <laughs> this is like, this is a good book. You could get this published somewhere. <laughs> 100 my feng shui uh, abilities are <laughs> top notch well that's good anyways you can let us know in the comments what you think which one do you like Greg? like the first one or, i mean do you like our version or do you like the original let us know <laughs> do you like know. the good version or <laughs> do you like the one that was right <laughs> like the bad the poem <laughs> you can like the bad poem we don't judge you for your wrong opinion <laughs> everybody's okay. wrong sometimes um okay uh, i'm gonna stop sharing so i have a Let's do another one, and then we can see how we're feeling. Um, see. Give me a second. This one's a, more of a classic poem that you will probably recognize. Yeah. But you probably won't remember the exact lines. Is the goal. If anyone has this poem memorized, sorry. You're going to have to bear with us. All right, can you see this okay? Yeah. This is not oh, the whole I poem, by the way. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah you, can see, you can see yours too. That's fine. Okay. All right. um, I'll read it this time. This is, again, the jumbled version. The darkest evening of the year of easy wind and downy flake. Whose woods these are, I think I know. My little horse must think it's queer. His house is in the village, though, to ask if there's some mistake. He will not see me stopping here between the woods and frozen lake to watch his woods fill up with snow. The only other sounds to sweep to stop without a farmhouse near. He gives his harness bells a shake. Just a quick note from Clorinda. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. The constructive version feels jaded. I've already been there and done it, that. Need, yeah, I think that going back to the original, I, I do think that comes across with the last line, especially like the last three lines from the original, I think convey that. Although I think the original version also has Wait, that jaded uh, sense. The deconstructive version? Are, when you say the deconstructive version, are you are you talking about? I think our version. That's how I Our version that. feels yeah. like that? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you think of this one? And this is the deconstructed one this as well, is, right? Yes, this yeah. is the jump yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining mm-hmm. um, Thanks for joining us, by the way. You know, I feel, I, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the feeling is, but. I like the last two lines of this. I think the last two lines can work together. Like to stop, what does he do? To to do this action, to stop without a farmhouse near, this is what he does. He gives his harness spells a shake. So I, to me that I like this this three these three lines. He will not see me stopping here between the woods and frozen lake to watch his woods fill up with snow. There's mm-hmm. something about this quadrant of of lines that logically it works, you know. Really works. Um anything you want to move. We didn't move anything last time. <laughs> why would you move pure gold? <laughs> why would you why would you adjust perfection? <laughs> okay, let's let's see. Um I think I might open with the question whose woods these I was thinking that too. are I think I know. But I forget if that's how it originally starts, but we can Who's move that. <laughs> I think I know. Frost with the heavy meter. Mm-hmm. Those first two lines go. I like that. These swizzies are. I think I know the darkest evening of the year. Mm-hmm. I could punctuation I could, could also it. be very helpful. You know, like. Like, for instance, if you had, whose woods these are? I think I know the darkest evening of the year. Like, something like that. Very ominous. I like the, what, what, the way what, that. I think I know the darkest evening of the year? Yeah. See that? It's very heavy. 
That's my that's emo Jeff coming through. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wanna love. <laughs> You just come with like a little, like little swoosh, uh, swoosh hair dude, like for the next, the next thing. My hair doesn't do that. <laughs> it will, Jeff. When you get emo enough, it'll a lot just of grow that way. I need a lot of product. <laughs> um, you have to offset it with some Nickelback so you can get back to regular. <laughs> Sorry, Nickelback, if you heard that. <laughs> if you're listening. Um, Swizzies are, I think I know the darkest evening of the year. Do you want to move something else? The back of the evening of the year. Uh, <laughs> the only other sounds the sweep to stop to stop a farmhouse near. No. Yeah, actually, no. Yeah, so the darkest evening of the year. The only other sounds the sweep to stop without a farmhouse near. So you want me to move this up? Yeah, move it up to the third and fourth line. It's like this. So. Okay. It's like this. Whose woodsies are, I think I know, the darkest evening of the year. The only other sounds to sweep to stop without a farmhouse near. I, I don't know if I'm feeling that third to that fourth transition. Okay. What are you, what are you thinking? Clorinda, what do you think? Is Clorinda still there? <laughs> Yo, Clorinda. What you think? Hey, Clorinda. <laughs> what do you think about my poem? Come on. We wrote this for you. We didn't what write do you, it. What do you think of a poem, a pastrami sandwich? We Come dropped on. this poem on the floor and it shattered. <laughs> Whatever. Um, oh, hey, Clor- hey, Clorinda. Okay, so what do you think about the? What do you think about the? This alteration, the third and fourth line. The only other sounds the sweep to stop a farmhouse to stop without a farmhouse near. I'm not feeling it, Clorinda. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Even Jeff trying. is not feeling it. No. Nah. But to be clear, he will not stop playing his guitar in the hallway. Never. <laughs> And he and he has fifty seven leather jackets in his Amazon cart. I donated one. It's fifty six. <laughs> um. So whose whizzies are? I think I know. Darkest. Don't the other sounds to sweep. Yeah. So what? So what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I'm, 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 mm-hmm. Beginning with the, the, the darkest. The, line. I mean, I'm guessing. For me, I, I have. I did not memorize the original poem. I'm, I'm thinking of Easy Wind and Downy Flake is supposed to go after. It only sounds as sweet with Easy Wind and Downy Flake. So, I, but that seems too obvious. It's too on the nose, and I don't like that. So, I'm yeah. going to not do that. Um, Wait, Clorinda. Clorinda says that they believe that it should start with the f- beginning the with the darkest line? evening of really? the year. Clinda it was embracing, yes. The hate flows yeah. through Clinda, yes. Ew. <laughs> Darkest evening of the year. Oh, actually, so like if we, if we switched them, so it's like the darkest evening of the year, whose woods these are, I think I know. I actually kind of like this line almost. I kind of like this as a last line. What do you think of that as a last line? To me, it sounds very ominous. It might have to. It might depend on what leads to it. Maybe. I'm gonna move it. Yeah. I'm moving it down here. It's okay. It's done. It's done. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can build up to it. Okay. Darkest evening of the year. My little horse must think it's queer. How about that? <laughs> oh, man. Yay, nay. Nay. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's kind of build up like part by part. Okay, so let's imagine okay. we start off with the darkest evening of the year. Okay. What's, what's our next line? I, I think the only other side, I think the second line that's there is like, to me, it's a good second line. What about. The darkest evening of the year, he will not see me stopping here. (sighs) 
that's some intrigue about the heaves. Like, who's not going to see you? Why are you hidden? What are you doing? <laughs> The darkest evening of the year. Like, there's all kinds of mystery. No, you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I, I I see where there would be intrigue. I think that I it hasn't built there. The poem hasn't done anything to make me want to try to figure that out, except for just tell me there's something to figure out. Okay, how about he gives his harness bells a shake? Our darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake. So now we're adding some sonic imagery into the poem. Line the darkest two. evening of the year. He gives the harness bells a shake. I not feeling that. Well, yeah, because because we already have some sonic. Clarinda, if you're with us, let us know what is your what is your second line out of these questions. 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 (laughs) (laughs) You had no idea what I was going to (laughs) say. Well, now you know. (laughs) Remember we did this experiment? It's like, (laughs) question. I want to get, like, my register exactly to that so, like, I can, like, not even be pushing the button, but it sounds like I'm pushing the button. Like, question, question, question. Question, question. (laughs) question, question. Hmm. So you're still leaning here, though. The other sounds the sweep. That's where you're leaning. Darkest evening of the year. The only other sounds the sweep. Between the woods and frozen snow. The darkest evening of the year between the woods and frozen lake. I could see. Oh that. crap! That's actually. I feel like that's really good. Actually, between the woods and frozen the darkest lake. Darkest evening of the year between the woods and frozen lake. We're gonna do it. Oh crap! Clap it up for. Did she do that? That was that was. Wait, her? where's the where's the clap? Is this it? Uh, <laughs> uh, golf clap, golf clap. There we go. Yeah. You get a song, you get our ballad. No, you're good. Thank you, Florida. That was actually I didn't I I I think I think I started thinking about that line initially, and I was just like, yeah, that's not it. But then when you said it, then I had to really I was like that's actually mm-hmm. really good. So that's that's really good. Darkest evening of the year between the woods and frozen lake. We need a third line. I think that's where I would put the only other sounds to sweep. Because we have right, sight, mm-hmm. placement, because now you're putting me between the woods and frozen lake, mm-hmm. sonic, okay. the only other sounds to sweep, to stop to stop without a farmhouse near. Uh, we don't even have to make that the fourth line, but mm-hmm. yeah, the only other sounds uh, to sweep. So Frost is going to want the next line to be this, but again, I don't... I want to mix it up more because I hate being too predictable. Don't he want to sweep? Actually, I kind of like this. No? Not feeling that. Yeah, I think the my little horse must think it. No, I don't know. The only other sounds the sweep. I actually, I I actually like the the only other sounds the sweep. He would not see me stopping here. Let's see. I do like the assonance. The I like the feeling of like us doing like open heart surgery on the poem and then like having like the like the audience like in the surgical room helping us like hey this is totally like open heart move, surgery. It's move like, that put move the that. heart there. No. The heart goes inside. <laughs> it goes by the stomach. By inside. the stomach. The Contestants. knee bones connected to why you're at the knee anyway. Why are you this is supposed to be he's dead. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> he's been dead for three hours. <laughs> why are you still performing this surgery? Please stop. <laughs> oh. uh, let's go ahead and give that a little. <laughs> that was a solid run of jokes, I think. I... You would not see me stopping here to ask if there's it's a mistake. Oh, check out this. Check out this. Okay. Just, 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 just hear me out here. Let's, let's hear you out. Let's see what's up. See, what's up? 
Oh, no, no, no. Darkest evening of the year, between the woods and frozen lake, the only other sounds to sweep. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow to ask if there's some mistake. Wait, hold on. Wait, uh, the darkest evening of the year between the woods and frozen lake, the only other sounds to sweep. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow to ask if there is some mistake. Ooh, I like those two lines yeah, together. Yeah, I, I really I like, like those that two pair. lines together. I like that pair. Ooh, I mean, you can even make it the trifecta to to watch this woods, to watch his woods fill up with snow, to ask if there is some mistake to stop without a farmhouse near, because it also decontextualizes mm-hmm. the to stop without a farmhouse near from from where we had it initially. Be careful, you're gonna have too much of a good thing. Mm. Let's just see. You can never have too much of a good thing. Wait a minute. I should have stopped eating those cookies a long time ago. <laughs> That was a community reference. It's very windy today. <laughs> That's for me. I'm, I apologize for... That's what happens when the side the soundboard. <laughs> question, question. I don't... The darkest thing... I kind of like what it put... I would come in and think it put the horse first. To watch, anyway, to watch his wits fill up the snow with snow, to ask if there is some mistake. My little horse must think it's square to stop without a farmhouse near. Ooh, it kind of takes that. It take kind of takes the context out of it a little bit more. Too. Yeah, because I, okay. I, I do. I kind of like it broken up because all those twos. I think if it happens, you lose. Two, two, two. You lose the weight of what you did here. I don't know. I like the run, but I mean, I could. I, I like that. I, I mean, it you, it's. You're sacrificing one thing or the other thing, you know. Uh, you 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 don't do it, you don't get the run. But if you do do it, like you do, cut it off, then it um, I think it keeps some more to wait. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, next line, okay. Clorinda. By the way, if you have another suggestion for us, all your suggestions have been on Spot point. On. So, Clorinda, are you a poet? Linda, did you write this original poem? <laughs> Linda, are you Robert Frost? <laughs> All right. So my little horse must think it's queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Uh, his house is in the village, though. Yes, I am. I'm a poet. Where are you from, Clorinda? Yeah, how'd you find us? <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, his his house is in the village. Yeah, I, th- I think I think I like that. No problem. That, that his house is in the village, though. This downy flake line is going to be a little tricky. All right, let's let's figure out where this down to you. His house is in the village, though. Of, of easy wind and downy flake. Born in Maryland, raised mostly in Columbus. Yeah. Are are you in Columbus now? This minute? Are you at Third Way Cafe? Are, are you? Are it, you <laughs> is this you? <laughs> Clorinda? Oh my God. <laughs> Clorinda, are you? Are you here to murder us? Clorinda, are you? <laughs> Why do you have that knife? <laughs> Are you him? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> Clorinda? Oh, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Wait for this. It's either this or do my taxes tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like, That's great. <laughs> lightsaber. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I guess the opposite Fantastic. of lightsaber. <laughs> All right. We, we have nice. to figure out where, where is this downy flake line going. This okay. is going to be a tricky thing. All right. Uh, I refuse. Uh, the only place I will not, I refuse sweep. to put it is after sweep. I refuse to put it after there because it's too predictable. But that might be the only place where you can go. <laughs> uh, this is tricky. 
Yeah, wow. It, so these are the he will not see me stopping here to watch the woods fill up with snow. To ask if there was some mistake. Well, How about um? I think it's clear to stop without a farmhouse near. What if it, we put it before sweep? Frozen lake of easy wind and downy flake. The only other sounds to sweep. In the woods and frozen lake. Easy wind and downy flake. The only other sounds to sweep. I feel like it throws off my cadence a little bit, but I, I think mean, it's because it, of the rhyme. Yeah. Really. It, it, All right, you give me a better option. No, no, I'm, like, no I, I wasn't saying it's like necessarily. It, it's it not my favorite either, negative, but, but it's a tricky line. That that preposition is really throwing us we off. We just sprinkle each of the words into different lines. <laughs> That's hard because he's super regular with the mirror. No, yeah, no, I, I think if we need an escape goat, we should just let this one go. That was also a community reference. We'll laugh at that. We'll laugh because that's hilarious. Okay, his house, blah, 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 blah. he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. Clorinda, help us out. We need your sage advice. Yeah. Tried after to watch his woods. That's Clarinda's way of saying she hates my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the woods? Where is that? Um, I just went. Ah, uh, uh, but I want the repetition. Uh, yeah, uh, nah, this, it, this, yeah, Clarinda, I don't know about that because. Uh, yeah, it kind of breaks up. Now it breaks all of them up. We want at least one run. Maybe we just take the line out. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So this, uh, I feel like this one might mess mess our brains up to watch this one. Oh, this now. And getting the line. We're trying to navigate of easy wind okay. and downy flake. All right, so this might. The thing is, to stop without a farmer. Okay, this might mess you up a little bit because I know you said you want whose woods these are. I think I know. But what if my little horse must think it's clear to stop without a farmhouse near? And then whose woods are these? I think I know his house is in the village, though. So you want me to and put then, his house is in the village, though? Well, I guess, namely, no, yeah, well, no, no, namely, the, the, whose how, yeah, whose woods are these, I think I know, after, there's a stop without a farmhouse near, and then whose woods are these, I think I know, after, to stop without a farmhouse near, whose woods are these, I think I know. And then after that, his house is in the village, though. He gives his harness bells a shake. Or, and then, of easy wind, his house, yeah, his house is in the village, though. Of easy wind and downy flake, he gives his harness bells a shake. You want him to give a shake of easy wind and downy flake? <laughs> <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so what else were you saying? And I know Clorinda has a suggestion too. I'll be there yeah, in a moment. Clarinda, I don't know what's, what's let your. Me, let, let me see what Matthias is. What, what was yours first? I think that was. Uh, I just. But no, it. yeah. So the the where where's this right here? Who mm-hmm. whose woods are these? I think I know. Mm-hmm. Is his house is to stop without a farmhouse near? Whose woods are these? I think I know. Whose woods are these? I think I know. His house is in the village, though. Of easy wind and downy flake, he gives his harness bells a shake. But doesn't that's not really an ending? Of course it is. He gives his harness bells so, a yeah, shake. Yeah, Clorinda, you can tell Matthias that he's wild. Clorinda, now think about this. Think about how that resolves the rhyme scheme. <laughs> Clorinda, look at this face. <laughs> Look at me, Clorinda, please. Um, 
Corner's suggestion was having it after Watch His Woods. Where's Watch His Woods? Uh, to watch his woods fill up with snow of easy wind and downy flake to ask if there's ah, but ah, but I want the, the, the two. That's what that's what I'm seeing <laughs> now. If you went in Clorinda's <laughs> way, <laughs> then it, 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 it breaks that part up. The thing that I want doesn't break it up, and I feel like it just it really it it really fairly resolves the rhyme scheme. Mm-hmm. So there's like this. Yeah, it's just not an ending. It's just yeah. like all right. He gives his harness bells well, a shake. T- oh, finality. Yes, is that yeah. what I'm supposed to feel from that? Because that's not what I feel. What, what, what I do feel you feel? Dissatisfaction. I'm not Deception, satisfied. Disgrace. Like, have, you ever, like, have you ever like eaten something or just like, I'm not satisfied with that meal? I, that's how I feel about I this. <laughs> I, it's, it's hard like going after after our first poem, which was just so wonderful. It was just so magically <laughs> done on act. <laughs> this one more lines to work with in this, this true. Too, so it's, there's, there's more, more margin for error um, but it's sat down I think the bigger issue is that that of it's the preposition with the, uh, the the of easy wind that's making this difficult um, give me one more minute to kind of look at it it's like last thoughts okay Clorinda's given up on us I don't blame her I respect that, Clarinda. Yeah, that's probably I, the best choice you made all day, Clarinda. <laughs> was giving up on us. <laughs> uh, the ending of the year between the woods of frozen like, only sounds a sweep. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow to ask if there's some mistake. Well, the horse must think it's queer. Stop without a farmhouse near. Because woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Let's see the original. Clorinda ran out of ideas. Yeah. I gave up to you win poems. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the original. This starts in that way. Let me zoom in a bit because it's kind of far. Okay, here's our original. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it's queer to stop without a farmhouse near between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The old mother sounds a sweep of easy wind and downy flag. There is that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like one off. I was literally one line off from words to words. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, the the one thing I really like, I mean, the original, I mean, it's hard to compete with Frost, but I do like our, the two line combination. I think it, I like stronger than, than the two that we yeah. have put together. Yeah, that's, that's, actually really, really starts with he, like this whole sequence here. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow to ask if there's some mistake. I, I do like that a lot. But okay, well, I guess they had the, the the same kind of general idea the the two broken up with one and then the other two. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Frost, you win. You win, Frost. All right, with that, I'm going to close this out. Yeah. yeah. See, Miranda, we really appreciate it's okay. that. It's okay if we run out. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap yourself up. hanging in there with us. Give yourself a sure. I really feel like, you know, I, one of the things I really, really enjoyed, especially about this live and about, about this particular one, is that not only were we working on poems, but we were working on poems and we were, like, dissecting poems and we were talking about poems. And we had, like, you know, an amazing Red conversation Clarinda. with <laughs> Clorinda, born in Maryland but raised in Columbus. And that's, that's quite the title. Yeah. Clarinda, do, you have, like, do you have any books or do you have any like do you are you doing anything in the city poetry wise? Or are you well, are you finished? That. That's another I, I like this sort of exercise too because it's um yeah. you're writing poems without like kind of like writing poems, you know what I mean? So I, I feel like yeah. it's a good like writing block exercise to kind of just you still have to put things together. Yeah. You know, I think it might it, it could be a really good thing for you to 
yeah, I mean, just even go through your own poems, like through, like so, you know, do it with you know, other, but go through your own poems and see, you know, maybe you know if you can make them stronger. I mean, Jeff did it on accident. <laughs> <laughs> just make you make your poem stronger. Um, see if there's anything that's uh, it's possible. I'm not doing anything with my pens right that's, now. Some very brave spelling there. Good. <laughs> and poems, cool. Well, hopefully we can inspire you to get back into it yeah and again like just do an exercise like this you don't even have to write your own poems just take other people's poems yeah. and do this yeah. <laughs> then publish them and say that they were yours and they were always yours <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm totally gonna try to find out <laughs> hey we got this, this is romeo and juliet no is and juliet romeo <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. With that, we're going to close out. But thanks for spending some time with us on a Tuesday with the we Versus Live. We'll be back next week. Thanks to Third Way Cafe also for hosting us as always. Shout out Third Way. And we'll see you guys later. See you. Take Bye. it easy, guys. Bye.